week marks a year since the death of teenager Harry Dunn, who died after being hit by a car while riding his motorbike. Anne Sekoulis, the wife of an American diplomat, was driving the car and fled to the US claiming diplomatic immunity. She was later charged with causing death by dangerous driving and Harry's parents continue to campaign for her to return to the UK to face trial. Um, Harry Dunn's mother, Charlotte, joins us this morning. Thank you so much, Charlotte. Um, I can't believe we're talking about this a year on. Um, how, firstly, are you doing? How are your family doing? I know this Thursday marks the, the first anniversary. It'll be a particularly tough week for all of you. Yeah, um, Thursday is definitely going to hold more significance than any of the other days so far. But um, every day is still really painful. Um, it's a still a real struggle to get through. So we are, we're tired, um, we're still as determined as ever, that determination still keeps burning um, and that's what gets us up every morning. But every day is still very, very hard. You take it hour by hour. Um, so this week is going to be particularly tough, but we've managed so far and we'll continue to do so. Well, Charlotte, like we say, you've been tirelessly campaigning the past year to try and get Anne Sekoulis back to the UK to face the British courts. Where are you at just now? Do you feel that this is within your grasp? Yeah, we, we are getting closer and closer as every week goes by. You know, we when we look back to 10, 11 months ago when the campaign started, you know, we were so far away from where we are now. We, I think, we knew that we would get to this point. We had no idea how long it would take. Um, but definitely we are getting closer. We won't give up until we do get her through the UK justice system. You and I would have to do it. She has to do it. Doesn't make any difference to me who she is, what her status is, what her job role is or was. We would have to do it, she has to do it, and we will keep going until we achieve our ultimate goal. We, we need that closure. Um, and at the moment, our grief and that closure and getting her to face the UK justice system is very much going hand in hand. You know, some weeks you can concentrate fully on the campaign. Um, other days of certain weeks, you just have to give in to your grief and you have to admit that you can't face anything or anyone that day. But for me personally, at the moment, the, the closure is going hand in hand with, with missing Harry because without that closure, I can't fully concentrate on myself and my immediate family members mm -hmm. no, we totally and understand. properly grieve. So we have to get justice done and we are hopefully almost there. Uh. Well, Charlotte, we, we said at the beginning that this diplomatic immunity, which is currently protecting um, Ms. Sekoulis in America, but you have made um, movement in that respect and that that diplomatic immunity or the anomaly, as Dominic Raab has, has described it, that has now been overturned. Absolutely. Um, one of our main aims right at the beginning of the campaign was to make sure that absolutely no other family ever has to go through what we've been put through since the 27th of August last year. You know, there's absolutely no way now that any other family will have their loved one's killer be able to leave and not face the justice system. We were desperate to get that done. Uh, we're very grateful to Dominic Raab and his team for helping us to achieve that. Um, so Team Harry have done really good with that. I'm extremely proud of Team Harry to, to have um, ensured that that loophole has been plugged. I'm not proud of myself yet. My promise hasn't been fully fulfilled um, and it won't be until justice is done, but I am extremely proud of Team Harry for, as of the 20th of July this year, making sure that it can never happen to anyone else again. Mm -hmm. 
Well, Charlotte, you're not scared in any way of, of taking on the big political figures as part of your campaign. And the US Secretary of State, State uh, Mike Pompeo, I know, arrived in Downing Street last month. He has always refused to extradite Anne uh, Sekoulis until this point, certainly. But you, how important was it for you to arrive down at Downing Street for his arrival? Extremely. You know, it doesn't matter whether I was at the other end of the country. Um, I would have still been there. But, you know, we're an hour and 15 minutes up the road from London. There was just absolutely no way that I was not going to be there. I was a little bit scared of coronavirus, of course. You know, I was shielding for many, many weeks during the, the beginning of the pandemic. Um, so I didn't want to use public transport um, by any means. So Rad drove myself and Bruce in, being in our social bubble that he is. And we, we drove as close as we could and we walked. But there was no way I wasn't going to be there. I wanted to make sure that I was on that pavement and I wanted to make sure that hopefully I was able to be, to be seen by him because... I needed to let him know that my determination hasn't wavered. I'm not going to go away. Doesn't matter how long this takes. Of course, I'm not very happy that we are being forced to tip this campaign into the beginning of its second year, but it doesn't make any difference. I needed him to know that we're not going anywhere. Determination is there. I have to fulfill my promise to Harry. I've never, ever broken a promise I've made to my children. And I'm not going to start now. No, absolutely not. And indeed, President Trump is fully aware of how you feel as well. Absolutely. Well, I'm sure he must be. Um, after talking to him in the White House, I made it very, very clear um, that justice needs to be done. I made it very, very clear that my promise has to be fulfilled. Um, I spoke to him as best I possibly could from parent to parent. He did agree with me that he would be doing the same if it was one of his children. And I'm absolutely positive that everything we've been put through wouldn't have happened if it was one of the, the people in power, if it was one of their children. Um, I think I'm very, very quickly learning that time doesn't heal anything. You know, people say to you very often that time is a healer. It doesn't heal anything. Um, you get used to living with the scars and with everything that we have been put through by the UK and the US government, we have many, many wounds that are still to scar over. But you just learn to, you learn to live with the pain that those scars cause. And the only thing that I can hope in the future once justice is done is that there's just going to be a little bit more time in between each between each bout of pain. Because some days the pain just feels like you've literally only just been told mm -hmm. that your son's been killed. And other days it takes hours and hours to still sink it in that he's not here even though we are very aware of the fact that he's not because we have to live with that pain every day. But time doesn't heal. You just have to hope that there's just that little bit of extra time in between each, each recall of, of the horrific pain. Um, and I, it's going to take me a long time, I think, to totally forgive both governments of what they've put us through. I totally understand it, Charlotte, and I think I think the grief feels so particularly deep because it does feel so unfinished for you and your family just now. I do know that you had one day to feel that you had set Harry free, to want a better word, um, on July 29th, and you went to a very special place that meant a great deal to him. Yeah, um, when Tim and Tracy got together when the boys were 18 months, two years old, Tracy had always been to Weymouth on holiday, um, so when she met him, that was the natural place that they, they went to, and the boys followed suit year in, year out. They, they went to Weymouth and Portland, and Harry and Niall absolutely and utterly fell in love with Portland. They would clamber over all of the rocks, whether it was raining, whether it was um, bright sunshine, you know, they absolutely fell in love with the place, and 
when we visited there with Tim and Tracy and Niall last September, just a few weeks after losing Harry, I fully, myself and Bruce fully understood why Harry and Niall loved it there so much. So the last day that Harry was in Portland um, was the 29th of July last year with Tim and Tracy and Niall on their annual holiday. So it was absolutely fitting and the right thing to do that on the 29th of July this year, we, we took him back um, and we settled him there. Look, I know it's very we difficult. We had some family and friends with us. And right. It's we so were difficult, sure. I understand that um, we're talking about something so personal for all of you. I just want you all to know we're, we're thinking of you this week. Please keep in touch with us, Charlotte. I'll keep in touch with you, as you know. And thank you so much for talking to us this morning. Good luck with everything. Don't forget, you can watch full episodes of Lorraine on the ITV Hub and all the best clips, compilations and playlists right here on our channel. Just subscribe now and you'll never miss an upload. Click here to watch another video similar to this one or click here to head to our channel's homepage to explore all of our exciting videos.